typical GTI jig on performance fashion. I'm going to do two videos in one day just because I'm super bad about <laughs> staying regular with adding content to the channel. So while I'm at it, might as well fill you in on the other development project that's going on. Uh, dubbed the ultimate cooling solution. A lot of people have asked, uh, well, is there anything I can do with the stock intercooler since it's just in there taking up space? And the more important question for guys that track their cars, I'm not talking about quarter mile or visits to Mexico. I'm talking about actual high performance driver education, time attack, track days, group sessions on a road course where even a stock GTI can get pretty toasty. A stage two car like mine will trigger the idiot light at 280 degrees Fahrenheit if you allow it to. So lots of heat to get rid of on these cars when they're pushed hard. The more power you make as a result, the more heat energy you're gonna have to get rid of. And the other issue, oil temperature. I was seeing consistent 275 degree Fahrenheit oil temperature on the track with my APR stage two car. So again, bigger problem for bigger turbos and higher horsepower builds, hotter tunes. I would consider APR to be a very safe and conservative tune, although the Unitronic marketing department would want to tell you otherwise. Uh, I've got 91,000 miles on my car, so not to sound like an APR fanboy, but I've had zero problems in 91,414 miles. So props to them for putting out a good tune. I bought this car new in December of 2015. It's a 2016 model year and I tuned it before its first oil change. So take that as you will for set it and forget it. Although there are some great Cobb tuners out there. I am definitely a supporter of what APR does. Extensive testing on and off the track, all different climates, really, really all over the world. So very happy with that aspect of the car. But for track use, cooling is definitely a problem. So oil temps and cooling temps will be addressed with the ultimate cooling solution. So if any of you might have to a little break here. I can't spin the camera around. Just spin it this way. It's Evo 10 in front of me. And if it has white wheels, it's one that I've ran before. We are really evenly matched. So this video might be postponed if we have an open in traffic. <laughs> but anyway, back to the topic. Um, oh, by the way, we're really close to Mexico. So uh, right on the border here. We may end up there at some point. Anyway, so if, if any of you are familiar with the layout and design of the OEM radiator on the Mark 7, the inlet is at the top and the outlet is several inches from the bottom, so there's kind of a dead space. And on a high performance radiator, you'll want to do a triple pass. So if inlet's here, outlet's there, zigzagging one, two, three times to make as much time in the core as possible to dissipate that heat. Obviously, um, yeah, it does have the white wheels. I can't remember his kid's name, but stopped and talked to him after doing some pulls here in Mexico recently. <laughs> he just shot a fireball at me. That thing's nasty. Not just a Volkswagen guy. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to have an Evo 10. Just wouldn't make a very practical daily driver for me. So anyway, um, with that extra dead space at the bottom that wouldn't work out for a triple pass doing the zigzag back and forth, I have decided to utilize that space for a proper oil cooler. There are, are some bolt-on, or at least one bolt-on oil cooler kit that rhymes with VWR. Uh, it, their core is way undersized. It might make a slight difference on a stock car, no tune or anything, but making any kind of power, their oil cooler cores is way too small. So we'll be utilizing a core with a 
the same AN10 line, so if you have a VWR kit, you can just connect your lines or build new lines the same size. To make the new oil cooler core, the radiator and oil cooler will be three inches thick, where the stock intercooler is much less than that. I want to say it's 1.6 or less. The current offering in the aftermarket for a replacement stock fitment radiator uh, CFS they advertise as 42 millimeters which sounds really big because you know this is America and we measure everything in inches but 42 millimeters converted via Google is 1.6 inches so just a hair more than half the thickness of my proposed design which will be taking up the entire volume the entire thickness of the OEM intercooler which is unused with my front mount and the OEM radiator so to the front and to the rear your fan shroud and everything will clip right in as it should the AC condenser will live in the same exact spot clipped in as it should mounting points will all be CNC machined to receive the really stressful to use poorly designed clips that Volkswagen uses um, I guess if it's not broke don't fix it although they could have come up with a much more user-friendly design they didn't so we're gonna run with that um, I won't be building this part there is a shop in Ohio that I did prototype development work with when I was a kid racing GNCC hair scrambles and motocross uh, me being the customer in that situation, him being the fabricator. So, needless to say, he's got decades of experience building race parts. Uh, most of that being cooling systems. So, a phenomenal fabricator. Uh, I can only hope to reach his level someday. And he had CNC machines in house, so he's going to be tackling that project start to finish. So there's still a few more things that we need to sort out. I have some measurements to give him. I've already gave him stock parts for him to use as a reference, and I'm going to send him a couple lines and some of those pain in the butt plastic clips that hold the factory intercooler in. So he's got some go, no-go gauges to make sure everything fits the way it should on the prototype and every part thereafter. So, yeah, if you're a track enthusiast, you've got something to be excited about. I, like I said, I don't have any pricing nailed down yet. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it as reasonable as possible, but um, the fabricator I'm using, he is... Uh, I said second to none quality all of the cores that he uses are made in America um, just leaves nothing to be desired it'll be worth every penny whatever the price may be and me just like all you guys I will actually be a customer of his in this situation I'm not the one building it he is so I'll update you guys with more as I get more hopefully get some prototype pictures coming soon like I said in the previous video I'm super busy right now so just trying to find the time to get the information that he needs out to him so he can start the process of developing the prototype and put it into production so subscribe subscribe to the channel if you haven't comment below appreciate any feedback, any uh, questions, concerns, input you guys might have. I'm sure there's some track enthusiasts uh, following along here. If you are, I'd appreciate any feedback I can get on your temperatures on track with or without the CSF radiator um, and anything else that might pertain to the ultimate cooling solution. So again, kind of rambling on, but it's on my mind. I've been getting a lot of questions about these things, so I just wanted to get it off my chest and put it out there so I can um, 
try and streamline my work a little bit and answer questions with videos instead of personally answering every single person with all this information. So, thanks everybody that stuck it out and watched through all my rambling. Have a good one. Well, I didn't catch a video of the flame, but I did catch up with the owner of the Evo 10 and it is the one that I've come across in Mexico. It's weird how close Mexico can be <laughs> when you know where to look. That's true. But his girlfriend's actually got a quick car too, a Mazda Speed 3 with a hybrid turbo. So we kind of did some three wide nationals at one point, <laughs> if you want to call it that, in a closed course environment, of course. So he's done some additional mods since we came across each other last time. So I, I think I'll spare myself the embarrassment because we were pretty evenly matched last time. He'd probably walk me now. Just a downpipe for the tune. That's all I did, uh, that's all I did differently. But I mean, it, it made like uh, 357 wheel, 362 wheel, to wheel to to torque. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling right now. <laughs> hey, they're used to me stumbling. I do everything in one take. Yeah. Not everybody can be all fancy like old Cleeter McFarlane. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, all right, guys. Matt Farrow. Bonus content here. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching.